Fill rate performance is widely used by distribution companies to measure their delivery performance. This animation video highlights the negative ramification of using the measure and suggests an alternative. The video is presented in form of interactive dialogues in a setup of a typical corporate meeting. Why did you not meet the sales target of the month? We did not get enough of the material that is in demand in the market. You always blame him supply chain for your underperformance. Why didn't you sell the items that are available in plenty? Sales skill is required to sell those. Isn't that why we have a sales team to push inventory? Why are you trying to hide the fact that you have not been able to meet the full forecast? This meeting is going in a very familiar direction. Stop this fight. I need numbers. Tell me about the fill rate performance trend. We have been maintaining fill rate of around 88% for many months. There is nothing special about last month. Supply chain always hides behind numbers. Rather, they should understand and meet the real need of the market. Can you be more specific, please? Fill rate does not capture the essence of what market wants. How can you say that? Fill rate has always been used as performance measure by many companies for so many years. Just because the entire world is following something for edges does not mean it is correct. Remember, we as a human race held on to the belief that the earth is flat for many decades, despite contradicting evidence. Let us understand this reasoning. Let me tell you how some of your decisions for improving the fill rate is actually harming us and the customer. Interesting. That would be some revelation. Tell me how. You measure fill rate in terms of complete dealer order fulfillment in 24 hours. Yes, that is right. Even if we miss one SKU in terms of required volume from the basket, we consider the order not fulfilled. Last month, you supplied an SKU in full to one distributor within 24 hours to fulfill his order set. And then, you never had stocks for the same SKU for the other distributors. Was this a good decision? I did my job. I service with the rule of first come, first serve. If the distributor to whom you supplied already had enough inventory, but the one to whom you did not supply was stocked out. Then this was not a good move. Yes, this decision is not right. We have lost secondary sales, which in turn will eventually affect primary sales. But fill rate tells me nothing about current level of inventory of distributors. Yes, that is the problem. Different SKUs in an order have different levels of inventory at the time of ordering. Assuming that everything has to be supplied in 24 hours can be damaging. Actually, in our environment, distributors do not need a full kit of all SKUs to be supplied together. He'll be okay if we delay supplies of those few SKUs which he has in adequate quantities. You mean we should delay supplies to well-stocked distributors and attend to the needs of stocked-out distributors? Yes. At times, our efforts to improving fill rate may not be good for market share growth. And at times, deteriorating the fill rate can be good for market share growth. Now you understand what I was trying to say all this while. Now I get it. I also see that the problem becomes more amplified for SKUs which are in short supply for a long period. How? Many want to hoard quantities of such SKUs. Actually, our sales guys help in passing on the crucial shortage information to distributors so that the sales team's targets are protected. Because of the measure, we might end up serving a large order of one distributor 
for one SKU just because it arrived earlier than other orders. Now I see how a few SKUs that are actually in short supply can pile up in large quantities with a few distributors. By oversupplying to one distributor and starving another, we aggravate the problem of starvation across the country. The bigger problem is that one distributor with excess stocks can create a problem of price hygiene in the entire market. Do you also understand how the fill rate always hovers between 85% and 90%? Keeping it in the high 90s consistently is very difficult in this uncertain environment that is prone to both scarcity and hoarding. In this scenario, it is better to ration out the requirements of dealers. Even if it means partial order fulfillment and very low fill rate performance. Yes, I agree. In this case, we may not supply anyone in full. We may even deliberately delay supply of the SKU much beyond 24 hours. You guys just told me that deliberately deteriorating the fill rate can be good for a company as a whole. So, fill rate is an erroneous measure we understand. What should be the new measure? For that we need to understand what our distributors really need. Distributors are traders. They order based on the level of inventory and expected sales. Their expectations? No stockouts and right inventory without excess. The new measure should evaluate how well we meet these two needs. Measuring these two needs can be complicated. We need to measure level of availability. If we have to ensure daily availability of every SKU at each distributor, we have to prevent excessive supply and limit supply only to immediate requirement till next supply. By preventing oversupply, we will have flexibility to divert stock. This measure will help us ensure high availability in the entire country. How it should be measured? At a monthly level, it should be measured as 1 minus that is number of SKU stockout days divided by total SKUs into 30. 1 SKU stocked out for a day means 1 point down for the month. Guys, it is not just about changing a measure in our MIS. It is a new paradigm we are looking at here. Yes, it calls for big changes in the way we take decisions. The IT system has to be changed too. Changes have to be brought into my sales team as well. It cannot push excess stocks. Yes, I agree. Let's take this forward. Before we go ahead with making these changes, I need to thrash out the details, identify all implementation obstacles. We agree on the direction of the solution. Yes, we still need to examine all issues before implementation. Why didn't we think about this before? Because we are always fixating on our local optima. We don't think beyond that and are not optimum for chain as a whole, including the distributors. My team is working on a project that seeks to improve fill rate measure. We are looking at how we can supply within 24 to 12 hours of the order being placed. What do we do with that project? You know the answer. Scrap it. <laughs>